Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about replacing the electric motor on a trim tool unit and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. This week I'm doing two short videos rather than one long video and that's so I can make these videos searchable and put them into the new website. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video but for now let's get down to the beach and replace this electric motor. Over here you'll see the boat we did the gearbox on the other day and the motor's quite corroded so let's swap it out for a new one. Don't often show you the beach down here on the island do I? Not a bad little spot. So here it is. Looking very rusty and nasty. My tool of choice for these jobs are these Allen keys that go onto the ratchet, but quite long. The other tool you're gonna to need is a Cooper's. The tricky ones are these back ones. You really need a bit of length on the uh, Allen key, and a regular Allen key probably isn't gonna give you the torque you need to get these undone. So let's start with the tricky back ones. So far, so good. When I went to mount the uh, forward controls, I noticed that the mounting bracket had been cut off, you know, the aluminium bracket. Evan's made a new timber one. Looks really sweet. Well done, Evan. I like that. I've also put just this sort of little blanket thing here to catch any bits that might fall. There's a little connecting spline between the pump and the motor, and sometimes it sticks to the motor and it can drop as you lift it up, hence not even attempting to do this one over the water. Beach the boat at high tide, do the job at low tide. Over here, there's a little pin that when the engine's trimmed all the way up, you can normally push that in to stop it falling, but as you can see here, pretty rusty too. Don't have a lot of chance of getting that in, so I might just find a stick or something and wedge it in. Uh, nice bit of driftwood should do the job. What size Allen keys are these? Five mil Allen keys, so you know. Oh, and just to confirm for you, we have power. You can hear the solenoid clicking under the cowling but no motor. So we've got power, power to the solenoid, but nothing happening at the motor end. Could be connections too, but you know, it's a bit obvious by this stage. All right, coming off easy enough. Oops, dropped, oh, all right. That's okay, that was just one of the uh, bolts. Now, O-ring here. A new O-ring came with the kit. Let's not let this stuff get into the oil. The oil level looks good. Uh, this is the little adapter I was talking about. Goes from pretty much like a flathead screwdriver blade type connection on the pump to the spline shaft on the electric motor. Yep, it's definitely secure still. All right, let's undo the wires and get this old motor out of the way. This here is the trim tilt relay block. It's actually two relays that you could uh, hear clicking when I press the switch. These are the two wires that go down to the trim tilt motor, the blue and the green. While the, uh, you know, the motor's not moving, both of these are tied to ground. When you trim up, the blue becomes positive, the green stays at ground. When you trim down, the green goes to positive and the blue stays at ground. So disconnect these and pull them down through the grommet here. I won't bother disconnecting the battery because there's no power to here unless you're hitting the button. And Adrian's not here, so there's no one to hit the button and try and give me a shock. All right, let's keep these boots for the new one. Uh, these wires come up to a bracket here. And down the back, like the winding path. Of course, the one thing I didn't bring in my little plastic bag is side cutters, but we can just break that. 
I'll get another cable tie later as well. I'm going to go for a walk back up the hill because as well as getting a cable tie I can also grab a little bit of sealant. I forgot to bring some with me. You don't strictly need it. Um, it does come with a new o-ring but I find most guys these days will put some on the flange just to be safe. If you get water in here you can get water in the electric motor it dies pretty fast so I think it's worth the extra protection. This is one I got from Oswide Starters. It's a local company and here is our new o-ring and to seal this flange I have decided to use flange sealer. All right, new o-ring on then I think I will put the flange sealant on the actual housing. Okay, thin smear of flange sealant got our adapter in place Without the adapter, the motor will spin, but the pump won't turn. So if you have that symptom, definitely something to check. All right, let's bolt it up. You can crack this housing pretty easily, and if you do, you're in a world of hurt. So be gentle when you talk it up. Let the O-ring do its job, let the sealant do its job. Don't think you've got to really crank it to get it to seal. Looks like this back left one's the only one you can't get to by hand, so. Do that one first and then we're home and hosed, I think. It's gone relatively smoothly in the scheme of things. And it probably will for you too. It's not a not a hard job. I definitely would put this in the DIY category. If you're careful. And by careful I just mean don't lose the little adapter and uh, don't uh, break the flange of the new motor. Out through the hole now on the mounting bracket. Push this conduit right down because this is going up in the cowling. What I don't want, however, is too much slack that can end up in here and when the apple goes down, it ends up getting scissored and cut. So we definitely want to avoid that. You could probably even go out like this with a cable tie. Let's do that. I actually think I prefer that than going up. I think the other one was uh, cable tied up. But I think I'm gonna cable tie it down. You can see there's two holes that you can put the cable tie through. Sort of sends it in a bit of a jaunty angle, but definitely nowhere near being in here. So there we go. Out with the old. <laughs> it looks like this and in with the new. All right, hook it up to the relays again. So, originally it came up the back here, which I presume is the best path to not get caught up in any of the throttle mechanism. Worst case scenario here would be if somebody goes full throttle and suddenly they can't come back because these have jammed up in the throttle mechanism somehow. That's probably the thing I'd be mostly avoiding. Okay, last one here, this is the blue, the up. I've got the boot on the wire, spring washer, put the nut, tighten that up. By having it come up to this bracket here where it was and taking the slack over to this side, it never gets low enough to get inside the throttle mechanism now, so it's pretty safe there. Okay, I think we're ready for a test. So, success. This boat is now ready for its uh, launch and its first test run. As you can see, it's a relatively straightforward job to change these motors and certainly for boats that live on the water, they're a pretty common failure point. The hydraulics are pretty pretty robust, you know, so um, I tend to find the electric motors are what fail most of the time. Uh, sometimes relays, and I do have a previous video on diagnosing this, which I'll link to in the description, but really common job. Uh, now the reason I'm doing the smaller videos, as most of you will probably know, is because of the new website. Uh, it's not a commercial thing or anything, it's just trying to bring all my videos together into a slightly more structured format so people can use the website to find a solution to the problem. So I'll show you where, for example, this video will end up going. This is what the main page of the website looks like. 
and in this case we've got uh, swivel brackets where the trim tilt sort of lives so if I go to this particular topic and I'll see the manual tilt stand for example but for example power trim tilt problem so we're gonna go here and bad connection um, batteries boat can be a problem here's one on fixing it but in this case, I'm going to link an extra video now on just replacing the motor if you know that's the problem once you've diagnosed it. This website's why you'll see a handful of smaller videos coming in. Some could actually be very short. Like sometimes you just want an answer to a problem. It's a couple of minutes long, but there will be other videos as well. Don't think that's all there's going to be. Uh, so but the website, I think, works really well if they're very focused, targeted videos. So I'm going to be constantly uploading and adding to this. But... In the meantime, I've had an idea uh, where I want to also start making some more entertaining videos, which are very separate to this, so you'll start to see both videos. What my idea is, is to start making some fun videos about outboards. They're going to ultimately be educational videos, but I'm going to try and make them some sort of crazy projects that also teach more about how an outboard actually works normally. So, for example, this is the outboard we were working on with the outboard we were working on in a previous video and I'm going to use this as a bit of a sort of proof concept of converting an outboard to kill cooling so although it's a bit of a fun thing to experiment with figure out how we can do it um, whether it works we'll actually experiment driving around the river on it but at the same time I'm hoping people will also learn a lot about how the cooling on an outboard normally works through the process of modifying it to something quite unusual. So you'll see a combination of kind of the fun projects, hopefully educational as well, and the very targeted videos, which are just, look, here's a topic and a link to it in the website. So anyone who's got a problem, go to the website. It doesn't cost anything. It's just a way of bringing some structure to the educational videos. Anyway, hopefully that explains sort of what's happening. Um, I've been really busy lately as well, lots of things going on, lots of boat troubles I've been working on that aren't really worth filming, but they've consumed a lot of time working in the office as well. So a little bit pressed for time, but I'm kind of looking forward to making all these various videos and hopefully you'll enjoy them. All right, take care. I'll catch you then. See ya. You have, come on, Daffy. Guess what's happening for you? Look, you ready? Look at that. <laughs> Luckiest oh, day oh, ever. All <laughs> time, best lucky find. <laughs> She's gonna make herself sick if she eats that much water. <laughs> She's laid sick. Four eggs, well done, Daffy. She needs protein. Yeah, true. <laughs> Look at that, still all live and wriggling. <laughs> Just. Oh my god, she's gonna be so sick. <laughs> <laughs> Roaring and wriggling. Just like Gollum <laughs> likes. Look at your face. <laughs> Covering in How good is that? You didn't even have to <laughs> scratch them up. She's slowing down now. Yeah, yeah.